The Messiah, the Mehdi, the movement. When Islam's flame had dimmed to a flicker, Allah's mercy did not stand idly by. But what about the undeniable signs that were to accompany his advent? And just how did his lasting legacy emerge from obscurity? Oh. بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الذي بعث في الأمين رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياته ويزكيهم ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة وإن كانوا من قبل لفي ضلال مبين وآخرين منهم لما يلحقوا بهم وهو العزيز الحكيم ذلك فضل الله يؤتيه من يشاء والله ذو الفضل العظيم عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال كنا جلوسا عند النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم فأنزلت عليه سورة الجمعة وآخرين منهم لما يلحقوا بهم قال قلت من هم يا رسول الله فلم يراجعه حتى سأل ثلاثا وفينا سلمان الفارسي وضع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يده على سلمان ثم قال لو كان الإيمان عند الثريا لنا له رجال أو رجل من هؤلاء عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال ينزل عيسى بن مريم عليه السلام عند المنارة البيضاء شرقي دمشق السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Millions of ethnic Muslims across the globe celebrate the promised Messiah Day on March 23rd. It is important to note that it is not the birthday of the promised Messiah, alayhi salam. As a matter of fact, it is one of the days of Allah the Almighty, as mentioned in the Holy Quran, وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ and remind them of the days of Allah. It is a day to remember the fulfillment of many prophecies and signs of Allah the Almighty. It is a day to remind ourselves to continue working towards furthering the mission of the promised Messiah under the divine guidance of Khilafat. Today we have four esteemed panelists who have joined us from three different continents to discuss Islam Ahmadiyyat. 
From Africa, we're joined by respected Amir Saib, Ghana Molana Mohammed bin Saleh Sahib from Ghana Studio. And from Europe, we are joined by Amir Saib, Germany, Abdullah Wagis Hauser Sahib. And from North America, we're joined by two panelists, Molana Azhar Hanif Sahib, Naib Amir, and Missionary in Charge, USA. And in studio, we have respected uh, Lal Khan Malik Sahib, Amir Jamaat, Canada. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And thank you for joining. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullah. The concept of Messiah is deep and it requires a lot of explanation. In today's program, we will highlight a few points about this topic with the hope that it will motivate and encourage people to delve deeper into this subject and search for the truth. If I could start with you, Molana Azhar Hanif Sahib, uh, we find the concept of Messiah in Judaism and the Jews are waiting for uh, Messiah for centuries. And they cite many prophecies from the Hebrew Bible as well about coming of a Messiah. Yes, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah and uh, bismillah rahman rahim. Blessing to all the viewers on this uh, day of from Messiah. The Jewish community, of course, is the longest standing community waiting for the coming of Messiah. And it is in their scriptures where we find clear mention of what will be the conditions in the world at that time when the Messiah appears and under his reign. They're very well-known statements uh, people have heard. Uh, for instance, it is stated in the book of Isaiah, the Jewish prophet, the wolf will live with the lamb and the leopard will lie down with the goat. The calf and young lion will be together and a little child will lead them, showing that different dispositions of humankind would finally come together and live in peace. And so the overarching theme of many of these uh, traditions from the Jewish scripture is the Messiah will bring peace. It will be a reign where there will be justice, there will be harmony, there will be a convergence of people living together as if they are one. Likewise, you see in the book of Isaiah chapter 2, verse 4, he shall judge between the nations and shall decide, decide disputes for many peoples. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. So all that era of bloodshed and violence and disorder within nations and amongst nations would end at the coming of the Messiah. And this is, again, an overarching theme of expectation by the Jewish community and is also mentioned by the Christian and the Muslims, the Messiah will bring peace. Jazakumullah, thank you so much. Uh, uh, so with this, the theme is that the, with the advent of the promised Messiah, with uh, usher in the era of peace. Now, if I could turn to our Ghana studio, Molana Muhammad bin Saleh Sahib, the term Messiah, as mentioned by Molana Azhar Hanif Sahib, is synonymous to Christianity as well. Jesus was the Messiah for the Israelites who appeared 2,000 years ago. Uh, it, he also predicted about the advent, another advent, which will come in the latter days. So please uh, t tell us more about that. Bismillah. The importance and the most interesting thing about the coming of the Messiah, as we find in the New Testament, is in the fact that Hazrat Isa, Jesus Christ, on whom the peace, himself propagated the message of the coming of the Messiah. He having come, as the first Messiah and uh, prophesizing about the coming of another Messiah after him. And uh, this prophecies, he used natural phenomena to emphasize this prophecy. And we find in New Testament that for nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, there shall be famines, pestilences, earthquakes, and in diverse places. Now we can immediately think of the First and Second World War we can immediately think of what is going on right now in Ukraine to testify to the prophecy that Hazrat Isa alayhi salam himself made in the Bible, which we find in Matthew in the New Testament. Wonderful. Thank you so much, uh, our respected uh, Maulana um, Muhammad bin Saleh Saib. So we have the era of uh, peace ushering in. We have the uh, also rumors of war, as you indicated. And now, 
If I could turn to you, Molana Azhar Hanif Saib, uh, this is perhaps one of the commonalities in Abrahamic faiths that they all believe in coming of a Messiah in the latter days. And there are many prophecies in the Islamic scriptures as well. Uh, yes, it is, of course, the desire of God Almighty, not just to lead the Jewish community or the Muslim community or the Christians, but to lead the entire mankind into one spiritual family, one fold. And so every single religion has embedded in their scriptural heritage some messages that indicate a, a way for them to see the Messiah when he appears. It's different for different groups, but there's some commonality. One of the things we find in Islam as well is this common theme that was mentioned in the beginning of this program in Surah al Juma, And that is that when this surah was revealed, Hazrat Abu Harirah, one of the companions of the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was sitting and he observed that a man approached the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and asked him that in this verse you recited, others from amongst them who have not yet joined this group, he said, who are they? And the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, kept quiet. So he asked him three times upon which the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, stood up and went over to one of his companions who was a non-Arab. It was Hazrat uh, Salman, may Allah be pleased with him, who was from Persia. He put his hands on his shoulders and said that if faith were to ascend to the highest heavens, the Pleiades, a man or men from amongst this group, meaning from amongst the Persians, would bring it back. And it is in this sense that we see the indication to Muslims as well to await the coming of the Masih, Al Ma'ud, the promised Messiah, and Al Mahdi Ma'ud from a non Arab who would appear <clears throat> when Islam would have. De deteriorated in his spiritual essence to bring back that light. Jazakumullah, thank you. So uh, you mentioned Imam Mahdi. Um, Muhammad bin Saleh Sahib, if you could talk about the, some of the signs that are related to the advent of Imam Mahdi. Well, in terms of uh, the natural phenomenon, one can believe strongly that the greatest natural phenomenon as a sign of the coming of the Imam Mahdi was a double eclipse of the moon and then the sun. This eclipse of the moon and the sun occurred in the month of Ramadan. And indeed, all religions have these prophecies in them. But it is in Islam that it finds its clearest manifestation in the sense that Islam specifically mentions that this will take place in the month of Ramadan. And truly, this took place in the month of Ramadan, and it was witnessed in the Eastern Hemisphere, just as it was also uh, witnessed in the, in the, in the uh, Western Hemisphere, just to prove the truthfulness of Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salatu wa salam. Zakumullah, thank you so much. Uh, if I could uh, turn to our respected panelists here in studio, respected Lal Khan Malik Sahib. Um, you know, when we speak to the Muslims about the advent of the Messiah. They come up with this argument that we have the Quran, we have the Ahadith, we have the Sunnah. Why do we need a Messiah? Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, the Holy Quran would be there, uh, is there. The sayings of the Holy Prophet وسلم, are with us. Uh, then what, what is the need of the reformer? This question has been answered by the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, uh, himself. He said a time would come on uh, Islam when nothing would be left of Islam except its name and nothing would be left of uh, uh, the Holy Quran except its words. People would read the Holy Quran but it would have uh, no impact on their hearts. And the mosques would be apparently full of worshippers but they would be devoid of guidance, no guidance uh, in the mosques. And their religious leaders, what would be their condition? The Holy Prophet وسلم, says that they would be the worst people on the face of the earth. Uh, all the intrigues, all the evil plans would originate from them and return to them. It means uh, uh, they would be responsible for all the disorder in the, in the earth. Now, how this uh, uh, prophecy has been uh, fulfilled, it is recognized by, the, uh, by most of the uh, Muslim scholars. And uh, I quote uh, Maulana Altaf Hussain Ali Sahib. Uh, he says in one of his uh, famous poems, Raha deen baki na Islam baki bas ik deen ka Islam ka naam baki. It means that uh, uh, 
nothing would be left of uh, Islam or, uh, or faith, but it would be just a name. Exactly in the same words in which the Holy Prophet Sallallahu had prophesied. Yes. The Promised Messiah has also commented on this condition and he said that it was a time for appearance of the reformer of the age. If I had not been commissioned, somebody else would have. Absolutely. Uh, this is something, uh, it was a prophecy, but also f something that was fulfilled in the Eastern Hemisphere. Uh, Abdullah Waqis Hauser Sahib in our Germany studio, if I could just turn to you, you know, as Azharani Sahib was mentioning, that it's the coming of Messiah is a global phenomenon. And this is what's happening in the Eastern <coughs> Hemisphere. What about the Western Hemisphere? Uh, was this something Christians were waiting for a uh, Jesus' return? If you could just talk about that. Bismillah rahman rahim Indeed, it was a time when the <coughs> whole world was waiting for a Messiah. And even in the Christian, in the Western <coughs> Hemisphere, I mean, uh, many Christian sects, uh, they were awaited, uh, waiting for the Messiah. And even some of them, uh, I have read uh, articles about it, they left their houses, you know, they left each and everything, their children, their families, and they went out in the <coughs> desert. Uh, in, the, in America, it uh, so happened, uh, there was uh, something in the air at that time that uh, the Messiah was to come. Uh, signs were uh, looked in the, in the, in the sky. Uh, the people were really struggling in each and every way, I mean, to, to find something about it. And uh, they were looking for guidance. Uh, they were desperate and uh, guidance was awaited. Um, I remember I uh, came across a booklet. It was from a publisher house, from a hippie publisher house, uh, about prophecies of the later days. And there were many, uh, not only from Christians, from Muslims, from Hindus mentioned prophecies. There were prophecies from Red Indians uh, from, from, from different uh, uh, ethnic groups. And there was, in the middle of the booklet, there was a, there was a map of the world and uh, arrows were showing, I mean, from where the prophecies came. <laughs> and at that time, I was not knowing uh, what is this place. It was actually, when I saw this booklet later, it was the Punjab. It was the Punjab from where all these uh, uh, signs and sayings were coming and uh, people were, uh, uh, desperately waiting for this and uh, I think uh, this was uh, something which moved the whole world and uh, I'm very happy that the Western world was uh, caring about this issue as well. Yes, ab absolutely. Global, indeed a global phenomenon. The Ahmadiyya Muslim Jamaat believes that the Messiah of the latter days has come in the person of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadian upon whom be peace. He was chosen by Allah the Almighty to successfully perform this monumental task of uniting humankind. Uh, if I could turn to uh, Molana uh, Muhammad bin Saleh Saib in Ankhana studio, uh, sort of talk about uh, this phenomenon. Uh, Hazrat Masih Maudalai was sent by God to unite the whole of mankind in the sense that his coming was prophesied by all the religions you can think of in the world, particularly the, all the Abrahamic religions that we can think of in the world. Each one mentioned the coming of a world leader who was going to be a unifier. They only gave him different names depending on the cultural background of the people and the prophecies that they were making. All this one boiled down to one single person who was expected by the world to be the, world to be the unifier and through whom peace was supposed to be established once more in the world, and through whom borderliness was going to be established once more in the world, and through him the world will be in a position, in a peaceful position to be able to turn and focus our attention to the worship of the one true God, while we discard uh, materialism, which hinders man from the worship of his true God. Yes, that's indeed. The Hazrat Masih Islam came at a time when the whole world was expecting him, and the whole world was expecting him because of these qualities that had been given him, and because of these qualities, which he, it was because of them that he was sent to the world to implement each and every one of them. He therefore becomes a beloved of the whole mankind, taking a cue from his master, Muhammad Mustafa, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. 
Wonderful. This is absolutely the hallmark of the Promised Messiah personality. The Promised Messiah had immense love and devotion of his beloved master, the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And he, had, uh, he told people that uh, one can show miracles in this day and age by following the footsteps of the Holy Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Karamat Garche be namo Nishanast Beya binger Zegil mane Muhammad. Whenever a prophet of God comes, there are many signs that accompany him. Earlier, um, Maulana Muhammad bin Saleh Sahib mentioned the, the prophecies related to the solar and lunar eclipses. Um, Amir Sahib, if you could just talk a little bit about that, how these signs were fulfilled. Uh, there is a very interesting prophecy of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi about uh, these two uh, uh, heavenly signs. One is the uh, eclipse of the moon occurring on the first day of Ramadan. And uh, the second one is the uh, uh, solar eclipse uh, occurring on the second day of the possible three days uh, of, uh, uh, of the month during the same month of Ramadan. Yes. So this, uh, uh, this prophecy is significant in the, uh, uh, in the manner that the Holy Prophet وسلم, has twice mentioned one in the beginning of the prophecy that this has not happened since the creation of the heaven of the earth and then repeated it at the end. And this is uh, what uh, has happened. Uh, actually, the promised Messiah Islam was asked when he claimed to be uh, uh, the promised Messiah, uh, he was asked, uh, has the prophecy of the so, uh, lunar and solar eclipses uh, been fulfilled? Yes. And the Huzur said, uh, you should wait, uh, it would be fulfilled. And then it was in uh, Ramadan of uh, 1894 uh, that on the first possible night of uh, uh, Ramadan, that is on the 13th, mm. the lunar eclipse occurred and the whole world saw it. And uh, then in the same month, on the 28th, the second uh, possible day of the month of the same Ramadan, the solar eclipse occurred. And uh, throughout the Muslim world, people said, that uh, this is the grand prophecy which has been fulfilled uh, with, uh, pro, uh, with the Prisian. And many of the uh, Muslims uh, accepted the fulfillment and uh, joined the uh, Imam of the uh, age. Uh, but there were some unfortunate ones who commented, now the people would be <laughs> misguided. Yes. Isma'u sawta samaa Ja'al masih, ja'al masih Niz bishnaw wa zameeh Ahmad You know, we have talked about uh, the heavenly signs. Uh, Abdullah Waqis Hauser Sahib, uh, you know, there were also many uh, signs, earthly signs, that were shown for the truth of the promised Messiah, Islam. I mean, a very, very heavy earthly sign was the plague. I mean, uh, just uh, now we have a taste of it after going through this pandemic uh, in the whole world. I mean, the plague, I mean, it was foretold by the promised Messiah. He had a vision on the uh, 6th February 1998, uh, when uh, in a vision it was told to him, angels of God are planting black trees in different places of Punjab. These plants are very ugly, black, frightening and stunted. I asked the persons planting these trees, what kind of trees are these? He replied that these were plague trees which would spread in the country very shortly. 
I mean, this was such a strong vision which the promised Messiah uh, received, and he published it immediately. And this was his practice uh, throughout uh, his time as a, mm. as, a, as a prophet. He published immediately his visions. Everybody was uh, aware of it. Of course, they were laughing, they were uh, uh, joking about it. Next winter, in fulfillment of this revelation, a real heavy plague broke out. And uh, it happened so that 30, 40,000 people every week passed away. It was uh, so heavy that um, uh, anti Ahmadiyya press was silent. Nobody said anything. And this was the time when many, many uh, people moved into the movement of the promised Messiah because he made clear cut signs. Yeah? The man who was, I mean, uh, uh, shouting against the promised Messiah, he said, I mean, you will be punished. God will give you a real punishment. I mean, you will die of plague. How do the promised Messiah foretold it. And he said, in my house, those who are in my uh, uh, security, uh, uh, they will not die. And there is nothing uh, uh, mentioned uh, throughout these uh, days that uh, anybody from the promised Messiah's family passed away. It was a heavenly sign, and it used uh, to mm -hmm. run for nearly six years in Punjab. Indeed, uh, this, this sign was fulfilled uh, on two ends. One is for those people who didn't accept the promise of Messiah al Islam, and then those people who accepted the promise of Messiah al Islam in the form of Inni Uhafizu Kullam Man Fiddar. If I can uh, speak to you, Mr. Lal Khan Malik Sahib, that one of the tasks of the promised Messiah al Islam was to defend the honor of Islam, honor of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of God be upon him. And whenever such voices ra was ra were ra raised against a prophet of Islam, uh, the promised Messiah al Islam in his time very uh, immediately took on this and asked people not to take on this path. Uh, yes. Uh, towards the middle of the 19th uh, century, uh, India was a battleground for various uh, religions. And uh, Aryas, uh, the, the Hindu uh, sect, uh, it was uh, most active. And uh, one of uh, its leaders, uh, Lekram, was using uh, very wild language against the against Islam, the Holy Prophet وسلم, and the Holy Quran. The Promised Messiah had the greatest uh, passion of his life in, uh, in defending Islam. So he uh, responded to him and uh, gave him the proofs of uh, truth of Islam and the Holy Prophet وسلم, and asked him to desist from using foul language against uh, these holy personages. But Lekram, instead of uh, uh, seeing reason, he uh, increased in uh, uh, his opposition and uh, used uh, very foul language again the promised Messiah Islam himself and uh, he asked for a sign. The promised Messiah Islam told him that God had told him that uh, the, the end of uh, Lekram was near. Mm. On this Lekram remanded. Uh, he himself uh, made a prophecy against the Holy, uh, the Promised Messiah Islam, and also he demanded that uh, he should uh, give him a time frame in which uh, it could be verified whether the prophecy is fulfilled or not. On this, uh, this decision took place uh, in 1893, and uh, Allah gave him the knowledge that uh, the end of Lekram would be within six years, and uh, the day when this would happen would be the day next to Eid, and this is exactly what happened on 6th of March, 1897, four years after the announcement of this prophecy, Lekram was killed in, uh, uh, in strange circumstances by his very um, uh, servant. And uh, after the killing, uh, there was no trace of the assailant. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, many uh, opponents of the Jamaat even acknowledged that this prophecy of the promised Messiah Islam had been fulfilled with great Prussian, Prussian. Wonderful, thank you so much. Uh, uh, these signs are not just limited to India. Um, uh, uh, if I could just turn to Mulan Azhar Hanif Sahib, the promised Messiah al -Islam, was promised by Allah the Almighty that I shall cause thy message to reach the corners of the earth. And his message, <laughs> the message of the promised Messiah al -Islam, also reached your country during his lifetime. Yes, yes, this is quite an amazing, uh, incident where, as you say, Allah Almighty had to create the circumstances for the Messiah to reach America because there was no way for him to get on a plane as we, as we would do nowadays 
or to use other means to really communicate his message. And the impact of a divine sign is even still greater than just a word. So in this sense, uh, what I want to share is a, a living sign, in fact, not just what happened over a century ago, but what's still a, a sign for the Christians and the Western nations and America. <laughs> and it, it, revol it revolves around a man <clears throat> named John Alexander Dowie. Born in Australia, he migrates to America, gains citizenship, and slowly rises up in prominence, being a powerful Christian minister, founding his own organization, and claiming that he had the power of healing through his prayers, no need for medicine. He would ban his followers from taking any medicine. and said, come to me, I'll heal you through my prayers, and that's all you need. And then he made an even grander claim that he was like the Elijah before Jesus Christ, alayhi salam. He was the forerunner of the second coming of Messiah in this age. And with that, he proclaimed that the city he's going to found in Illinois called Zion, that this is the spot where Jesus would reappear, would would have his second advent. And many people flocked around him. They say up to 100,000 people came in. Rich people bought property because they wanted to witness that here is the man who claims to be the forerunner. Here is the place where Jesus will appear. And his popularity was on an ascent. It's at this point where he came out and he challenged what a prophecy saying that I, I prophesy that if Muslims do not accept Islam, they will die and be destroyed. Upon hearing this, that man in Qadian, India, who claimed to be the true advent of Jesus Christ, alayhi salam, Hazrat Mizar Ghulam Ahmed of Qadian, alayhi salam, he took up the notice and he sent him a message and wrote a treatise describing all the beauties of Islam. And the newspapers in America, they start showing this treatise on which he said, no need for Dawi to wish for the death of all Muslims. Come into a prayer duel with me and let God decide that who is true and who is false and the false one will die in the lifetime of the one who is true. At that time, he was much older than Dawi. Dawi had prominence. It was almost like a David and Goliath battle where a, a man of all this power, position, and prominence was going against a man who was in an obscure village far away in a, in a faith that was also not well known and well populated. But we can see the outcome that this was a sign, I say living sign. Dawi in his prominence Ultimately, he became paralyzed. He lost his sanity. His family abandoned him when they discovered that he was womanizing. He was, he was a, dr a drunkard, even though he was alcoholic, even though he had prohibited alcohol. And so many things happened to humiliate and destroy this man in the end. He was left penniless, homeless, without any followers. And in that city of Zion today, as I speak, a mosque is being built and completed in the, in the town of Zion, with a minaret that is similar to the minaret in Qadian, and very soon that will be a standing sign that the person who claimed to be the forerunner of Christ is now dead and gone and no one knows his name, and the man from India who claimed to be Messiah, his minaret stands, it will stand as a testimony for time of the truth of Islam and the truth of Prophet Messiah, alayhi salam. Alhamdulillah, this is a mighty sign that, uh, that had been fulfilled in, in North America. Uh, the promised Messiah and Imam Mahdi -Islam, was given different types of signs. Uh, if I could just bring in Molana Muhammad bin Saleh Sahib, uh, he was a non-Arab, but he had a deep and profound knowledge of the Arabic language as well as of the Holy Quran. That was one of the signs of his truthfulness. The Arabic language is the language, the mother of all languages in this world. The Arabic language is the language of the Holy Quran. Hazrat Masim never had any formal education in Arabic language. But Allah Ta'ala decided to prove his truthfulness through his proficiency in the Arabic language. So Hazrat Masim himself, he announced to the whole world that Olimtu Arba'ina Alpha in a Lugat al Arabia, that he, Allah Ta'ala has taught him 40 root words of the Arabic language. And with this, he wrote a number of books in the Arabic language. Added to this, on the eve, the night before a particular Eid al Adha, Allah Ta'ala revealed to Hazrat Muslim and directed him to deliver the Eid sermon the following day in Arabic language. He did that verbatim 
extemporaneously revealed to him by Allah Ta'ala, word for word, sentence by sentence, and he delivered that sermon completely. And that sermon is now in a book form, and it is referred to as Khutbah al hamia That's the revealed sermon. Ayuha nas inni ana al-Masih al-Muhammadi, wa inni ana Ahmad al-Mahdi, wa inna Rabbi ma'i ila yawm lahdi min yawm Mahdi. وإني أعطيت ضراما أكالا وماء زلالا وأنا كوكب يماني ووابل روحاني إيذائي سنان مذرب ودعائي دواء مجرب أري قوما جلالا وقوما آخرين جمالا وبيدي حربة أبيد بها عادات الظلم والذنوب وفي الأخرى شربة O people, verily, I am that Messiah who is from the dispensation of the Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. And I am Ahmad, the Mahdi, and my Lord is surely with me from my childhood to my grave. I have been granted that fire which consumes all, and such water which is sweet. I am Sirius, the brightest star in the night sky, and a spiritual rain. Harming me is akin to a sharp spear, while my prayer is an efficacious medicine. To certain nations I display awe, yet to others I manifest beauty. In my hand is a weapon through which I efface all habits of oppression and sin, while in my other hand I have a drink through which I rejuvenate hearts. Hazrat Masih Maud was indeed given knowledge of the Arabic language by Allah Ta'ala himself. And with this knowledge, he threw a challenge to the whole world, all the scholars of the world, all the Arab scholars, all the Muslim scholars, for anyone to come forward and compete with him in the writing of tafsir, commentary on the Holy Quran, to expose the beauties of the Holy Quran, expose the magnificence of the Holy Quran, the truthfulness of Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he openly challenged the whole world saying, Hal min is there any competitor? Is there anybody who can come out to challenge me? I am claiming that Allah Ta'ala gave me the knowledge of Arabic and there is nobody as a sign of my truthfulness who can compete with me in classical Arabic according to what Allah Ta'ala has given to me. Until date, nobody among the scholars that you know of in the world, in the Arabic world, and the whole world brought together, nobody dared to accept the challenge. Until date, nobody has accepted that challenge. And that comes to stay as a sign of the truthfulness of Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salatu wasalam. And he used this Arabic language in the form of khutbah il hamiyah to announce to the whole world that I am the promised Messiah. I am that Messiah. I am in the second coming of Jesus Christ, and I have come in fulfillment of all the prophecies about the coming of the Messiah. Jazakumullah. Uh, and not only that, but also Allah the Almighty showed a range of uh, signs in the, for the truthfulness of the promised Messiah alayhi salam. And the whole purpose of the advent of the promised Messiah alayhi salam was to have a living connection with God Almighty, to recognize God. And the question is how we can have a, a relationship with God Almighty. And it is by self-reformation. It's by fulfilling the rights of hum God, rights of human being. And as a matter of fact, these are mentioned in the 10 conditions of Bayat, which were written down by the promised Messiah And these points are actually a summary of the teachings of Islam. The prophets of God come and lay principles based on divine guidance that lead to success, as mentioned by Allah the Almighty in the Holy Quran, كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَأَغْلِبَنَّا أَنَا وَرُسُلِي that Allah has decreed, most surely I will prevail, I and my messenger. So prophets of God are not prone to failure.
listen carefully, and remember that my soul is not liable to destruction and that my nature is not prone to failure. I was alone and was not unhappy at being alone. Will God then desert me? Never. Will he destroy me? Never. My enemies will be humiliated, and those envious of me will be put to shame. And God will bestow victory upon his servant in every field. I am with him, and he is with me. Nothing can break our relationship. If I could turn to uh, Abdullah Waghis Hauser Saib uh, in Germany, that prophets of God come in times of need, in times when people forget God Almighty, and some even question uh, their, his existence. At the time of the promised Messiah al-Islam, there were many who actually held this belief, and some even prominent Muslim scholars who uh, even propagated that the God does not speak now. Yes, I think it was Said Ahmed Khan, uh, he proclaimed that God has uh, stopped speaking. And I think many philosophers in the West, I mean, they had this concept that uh, prayer is something which is like an uh, exercise, a spiritual exercise which one has to do uh, just to remain happy. But I think this is one of the most important uh, uh, signs of the promised Messiah and uh, his most important uh, duty which he uh, 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 fulfilled, that he showed to people uh, that our God is a living God, that he speaks, that he hears, that uh, he communicates with uh, human beings, and uh, he gave the best example. Uh, I, I read that in the time of the promised messiahs, Daily people were uh, listening and, and waiting for new prophecies which came down, new ilhams which uh, he, he received. I mean, children were, were, were moving around in Kadian uh, to take care about this because he was speaking to God Almighty and he told us uh, how to talk to uh, Allah uh, Almighty, uh, how to pray. Uh, he said, for yeah. example, as an example, if you are not uh, weeping in, in your end? prayers uh, for two weeks, then you should fear for your belief. He said, I mean, you should pray to God Almighty like a baby is crying for the milk of the mother. And then God will listen to you. And this is what I uh, really, uh, I mean, uh, found out when I came to Kadian 45 years ago, that people were talking about God Almighty like he is a member of their family. Everybody had experience with God Almighty. And this is what I would like to tell to my um, uh, brethren and sisters, I mean, all over the world, that, I mean, take this day of the promised Messiah, 23rd uh, March, uh, to fulfill this prophecy in yourself, yeah? That, I mean, everybody who has a, a desire, he can speak to God and he will listen what God will speak to him, inshallah. Inshallah, absolutely. This is one of the uh, greatest ach achievements of the Promised Messiah, Islam, that how he uh, revived the faith in the living God. Um, Mulana Azhar Hanif Sahib, earlier you've spoken about uh, how Islam was being attacked by different religions uh, in the time of the Promised Messiah, Islam. And at that time, he was the only one who stood in defense of Islam. Yes, it was a time when the Muslims were, in fact, reeling and retreating from the field. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> they they had <clears throat> excuse me uh, they had no longer a deeper sense of the Quran of their faith and so when the Christian missionaries and others were attacking Islam insulting the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam they had no response and Allah raised a champion at that time in the Old Test in the New Testament in the Book of Luke it says that the Messiah uh, is, is a prophecy I will give him a mouth and a wisdom and his adversaries shall not be able to gain, say, or resist him. And this is what the gift given to Pramasaya Islam, the gift of being Sultan Qalam, that mastery of the pen where he wrote book after book, he stood on the stages and he delivered speeches after speeches, and he mesmerized the, the audiences, and he pushed back all of that onslaught, onslaught against Islam. And the Muslims saw him initially as a champion, until he claimed that I am the Imadi al-Mahud and I am the Masih Mahud who is awaited 
Then the very Muslims who just earlier, after he wrote a book called Barahini Ahmadiyya, that five volume book was championed as the answer for the age. And still the books that you see now by Pramasaya, they are the champion for us to uh, use in our arguments against those who do not know Islam, the beauties, or who are opposing and attacking Islam. Indeed, this was his legacy. Yeah, he indeed. Indeed, a great a, a, a legacy of the promised Messiah al Islam. Mulana Azhar Hanif Sahib, you have indicated that uh, the promised Messiah al Islam was Sultanul Kalam. He wrote many books, and one such book he wrote uh, in 1905 when he started receiving revelation about his demise. Uh, the, he named the book Al Wasiya, the Will, and in it he wrote, "So, dear friends, since it's the practice of Allah the Almighty from time immemorial." that God Almighty shows two manifestations so that the two false joys of the opponents be put to an end. It is not possible now that God should relinquish his sunnah of old. So do not grieve over what I have said to you, nor should your hearts be distressed. For it is essential for you to witness the second manifestation also. And its coming is better for you because it is everlasting the continuity of which will not end till the day of judgment. And that second manifestation cannot come unless I depart. But when I depart, God will send that second manifestation for you, which shall stay always, which should always stay with you. Mulana Muhammad bin Saleh Sahib, a grand prophecy has been made by the promised Messiah al Islam here. Indeed, it is a great grand prophecy indeed, but it started from his master, Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who first and foremost made the prophecy about the coming of the Masih Mahud Alayhi Salatu Wasallam and mentioned that Summa Takunu Khilafa Ala Min Haji Nabuwa, that with the coming of the Masih Mahud in the later days, will Khilafat was more be established on the surface of the earth. And that exactly is what happened for Khilafat to be established. When it was about time for Hazrat Masih to go to his Lord, Allah Ta'ala intimated him, Allah Ta'ala intimated him, Karuba, what to call, Ajil call Mukaddar, that the time allotted to you is near, which is to say that it was about time for him to die. So this, Hazrat Masih announced this to the whole congregation, to all his companions, sadness overtook them to hear of the demise of their master, just as it was at the time of Rasul Karim sallallahu alaihi wasallam. But he consoled and he said, "Gentlemen, hold on. It is necessary that I go because it is after I have gone that the second manifestation will come, and that is the good news that it carried with him. And that second manifestation is a fulfillment of that prophecy of Rasul Karim Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So Haji Nabuwa, as that Muslim Rasulullah made his companions aware that it is after he is gone that the set." Kudra to Sanya will come, the second manifestation will come. And that second manifestation is Khilafa. And it is Khilafa that was to ensure that Muslims, the whole world, and the whole of mankind, rally under the banner of Khilafa and under the banner of Islam to bring about peace, brotherliness, love, and affection for mankind. Uh, wonderful. Thank you so much. This is, again, the legacy of the promised Messiah, al -Islam, which is being continued uh, by the second manifestation in the form of Khilafat by the grace of Allah, the Almighty. Abdullah Waqis Hauser Sahib in our Germany studio, if I could turn to you, one of the countless blessings of Khilafat is that it unites people. It brings people together. Please. Uh, it is really the uh, source of success for us in the world. Whenever I uh, talk with people, they are amazed that we are a comparatively small community, but we are all over very successful. We are so successful that uh, we uh, have results presented to them, which they make them astonished. And uh, the secret behind is Khalafat. We have a leader who is not only uniting our country, he is uniting the whole world. Wherever you go in the world and you meet Ahmadis, you will find the same beliefs, the same uh, atmosphere, the same strong uh, love in the Khalifa. And of course, we know and we have experienced that Hazur Yaktas, uh, may Allah be his helper, he is loving all of us all over the world. And 
He is keeping contact with politicians, with business people, with people from all walks of life in every country in the world. I mean, I was amazed, I mean, to see how even people speak about our Khalifa in a way. Uh, and the point is, I mean, hardly you find people talk about a personality worldwide in uh, such, uh, I mean, uh, intensity. Point is that with Khalafat, the equality uh, of human beings is being visible. Because Hazur makes no difference between colors, between ethnics, between religions. I mean, he has a very close link to each and everybody of us. We don't know sometimes how this works. It is a miracle of Allah Almighty. He cares about it. And we have the possibility to experience it if we love our Khalifa, if we stick to uh, uh, following his advices. And uh, this is something uh, the world needs nowadays, such a leader. And uh, it is one of the solutions to get guidance from him worldwide, yeah? especially now when we are standing in front of a catastrophe. Yes. Uh, Alhamdulillah, it's indeed a miracle of God Almighty, as you've indicated, respected uh, uh, Abdullah Waghis Hauser Sahib. And the love that Allah has instilled in the hearts of Ahmadi Muslims across the globe with Khilafat is just immense. And it's a, indeed a miracle of uh, Allah, Allah the Almighty. So Khilafat has many blessings. And uh, uh, Muslims understand this, uh, that uh, the, the, it unites people. It, if, want, if, if, if want Islam to flourish, it is going to be happening through Khilafat. So... If I could ask you, uh, Lal Khan Malik Sahib, that by the grace of Allah the Almighty, um, uh, that uh, uh, Khilafat Ahmadiyya has been continuing the legacy that has been laid by the Promised Messiah Islam, the framework of establishing peace and justice. The promotion of justice uh, started with the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He prophesied that the, at the time of the Messiah, uh, conditions of the world would be such that no, uh, no wars would be uh, uh, fought in the name of religion. And uh, Huzur said uh, that the Mahdi, Yazaul Harb, he would abolish uh, the, uh, the wars. And uh, the Promised Messiah Islam uh, exactly uh, did this. Uh, Azur Islam explained the true concept of jihad according to the Holy Quran, that the jihad is of different types. Uh, the first jihad is one's own with um, one's own self against uh, evil inclinations. Mm -hmm. The second jihad is conveying the message of Islam and uh, uh, the teaching of Islam to uh, everyone around. And uh, the third category is uh, uh, in the face of aggression to defend Islam uh, in the same manner. So, but uh, in the light of the prophecy of the Holy Prophet ﷺ, the conditions when the promised Messiah ﷺ appeared were such that no religious wars were being fought. So this is what Zur announced, that now is the na not the time for uh, violent jihad. But the jihad with peaceful means, uh, with the pen, would continue. And this legacy of the promised Messiah ﷺ continues with the Khilafat. All the Khulafa of uh, Ahmadiyyat have uh, taken every opportunity of uh, promoting peace. Uh, they not only guided the Muslims around the world to, uh, on various occasions when there was uh, time to advise them how to uh, achieve peace, uh, but also to the world leaders whenever they were, there was an opportunity how to uh, uh, end conflicts and uh, promote peace. Uh, Sayyidina Hazrat Khilafatul Masih, the fifth, may Allah be his helper, uh, has uh, spared no opportunity, has let uh, go no opportunity of promotion of peace. He has traveled to various seats of uh, power. He has addressed the uh, European Parliament. He has uh, addressed the uh, uh, British Parliament. He has uh, traveled to Washington, D.C. And he has taken this message that if we want to promote uh, peace in the world, we have to practice absolute uh, justice. One interesting incident of the impact of uh, how Huzur avails every opportunity of promotion of peace is, uh, I recently visited uh, Belize uh, on the opening of uh, their first mosque, uh, Masjid Noor, and the ex-mayor of uh, the Belize city, uh, he attended it and he spoke and he said that I remember distinctly the advice 
حضرت مرزا مسرور احمد دا کیلف آف احمدیہ مسلم جماعت گیو می وین آئی میٹ ہیم آن دا جلسا سلانہ یو کے اٹ واز دیٹ پیپل نارملی ایمفیسائز دیر رائٹس انسٹیڈ آف دس واٹ از نیڈیڈ از دیٹ وی شوڈ ایمفیسائز واٹ از ڈیو فرام از واٹ آر اور ریسپانسبلٹیز اینڈ دس ایکس میئر آف بلی سٹی ریپیٹس دس میسج آن ایوری پبلک اوپین ہی ہیز دا اپرچونیٹی ٹو اسپیک آئی واز امیزڈ ہاؤ ایفیکٹیو ہیز دس وے آف پروموشن آف پیس ود حضرت خلیفۃ المسیح دیٹ وین ایور ہی میٹس اینی ون ہی ٹیلز ہاؤ دا ورلڈ کین اچیو پیس And so I would want to place on record our admiration for the leadership that you personally have shown and that collectively the community has shown. So thank you for the work that you have done, the difference that you have made, and the service that you continue to do, not simply to members of the Ahmadiyya community, but in being a powerful voice for tolerance, for reconciliation, and for peace. Love for all. Hatred for none is a philosophy from which we can all benefit and for which we have much to learn in the years ahead. In this we are allied with His Holiness, a courageous champion of religious freedom and of peace. But again, it is an honor to welcome you, Your Holiness, and I want to say uh, it's an honor because you are a man, though of humble beginnings, your leadership has made you a figure of global prominence. Uh, you started as a teacher, and you have become a guide for millions of Muslims worldwide. You work to help farmers in Ghana, that humble task, uh, and you remain a force for progress across borders and advocate for investment in the developing world. You have been prosecuted for your, persecuted for your beliefs, jailed for your faith, and exiled from your homeland but you refuse to turn to bitterness or vengeance. And that is a very important lesson. Today we recognize His Holiness's commitment to world peace, to brotherhood, to justice, and to religious freedom. I've inter interacted with many of the Ahmadi uh, uh, followers, both in California and uh, here in Washington, D.C. And I'm only struck by their dedication to peace and to justice and the respect and admiration for the spiritual leader of their community. The prophets of God come to warn people as well. The promised Messiah salam, has also warned in Al-Wasiya. Dunya mein ek nazir aya, par dunya se, ne usse kabool na kiya. Lekin khuda usse kabool karega, aur bade zor awar hamlo se uski sachai zahir kar dega. A warner came onto the world, but the world accepted him not. Yet God will accept him and demonstrate his truthfulness with mighty onslaughts. Mulana Azhar Hanif Sahib, Khilafat continues to further the legacy of the promised Messiah and continue to warn that humanity is sitting on the precipice of destruction. But at the same time, it has also given glad tiding that in this day and age, the promised Messiah is the citadel of security. Yes, the... Our Messiah is mentioned in the traditions as a Nadir, a warner, but he's also a Bashir, a bearer of glad tidings for those who will accept him, enter his fold, and seek that security and shelter within the walls of his divine structure, this Jamaat. And for that, our Khalifa throughout the ages have been sending these same messages to the world. And recently, as we see the fifth, Hazrat Mirza Masroor Ahmed, may Allah strengthen his hand, has delivered the same message of warning, but also a way forward for us. Let us listen to what directly he had to say. As I have said on many occasions, the world is moving rapidly towards another world war whose repercussions could easily last for generations. I've expressed my view on many occasions that the leaders of, this, of uh, some of the nuclear powers are trigger happy and appear not to appreciate the truly grave consequences of nuclear warfare. Not only do such weapons have the power to annihilate the countries targeted, but also 
have the potential to destroy the peace and stability of the entire world. Thus, it is imperative that nations and their leaders do not focus only on their own national interests, but consider what is best for the world at large. There will be no winner in a war of all against all, particularly if it ends in a nuclear war. And that is a possibility that cannot be ruled out. It is no exaggeration to say that the world stands at the brink of a disaster. And there is a grave risk of devastation and destruction, the like of which we have not seen before. The world has become a global village. And so a lack of mutual respect and a failure to, failure to join together to promote peace will not only harm the local area, city, or country, but in fact will ultimately lead to the destruction of the entire world. And if, God forbid, the current situation escalates further, the consequences do not bear thinking about. Besides, those who are able to shield underground sh should not be under the illusion that a fortified bunker will leave them immune to the devastating consequences of a world war. For one, uh, living isolated lives underground will surely lead to a myriad of mental health issues, frustrations, and anxieties. Furthermore, what will those rich people do when they emerge from their bunkers to find that life has changed beyond all recognition? The question we should all ask ourselves is whether we desire to leave behind a better world for our children and future generations to live in? Or do we wish to hand over a legacy of warfare, bloodshed, and untold sorrow and grief? Since being a very young man, I have been hearing this same message from every Khalifa who has been the leader of this community in my lifetime. Going back to 1967, when the third Khalifa had visited European countries and Africa, he came back and gave the same message, a very stern and staunch warning that we're on the brink of a devastation, which the horrors you can't imagine. At the same time, he said, by word of a hope that this can be averted, quote, he says, let us not forget that this prophecy, like all prophecies, is a warning and its fulfillment can be delayed or even averted, provided man turns to his Lord, repents and mends his ways. He then said he can yet avert divine wrath if he stops worshiping the false deities of wealth, power, prestige, and establish a genuine relationship with his Lord, refrains from all transgression and does his duty to God and man and learns to work for the true human welfare." End of his quote. I can vividly remember those days where since then there was a Cold War, the Cold War went away, and now what has happened has become a very hot war in Ukraine with Russia and America and allies once again lining themselves up for a potential catastrophe that none of us, none of us, whether we are Muslims or non-Muslims, wishes to endure. What is the way forward? How can we secure ourselves and our family and our homes and our countries and our future generations. A clear message, accept this man of God who's come, who was to be a champion of peace. The Jewish scripture says it, the Muslim scripture says it, and the Christians are saying, when this man comes, accept him, you will see peace on earth and goodwill to all men. I would say in the end, let us take Hazur's challenge to us to pray to God Almighty to save us from this annihilation and to preach as hard as we can 
to bring people into this divine fold and save mankind from this catastrophe that again, no man, no woman, no child can bear as you see now in Ukraine. It's just a glimpse, a small version of what could happen. May God protect us. May God have mercy on us. May God lead us into his fold, his love, and his, and his security. Amin. Jazakum Allah. Blessing to this day for all of us. May Allah continue to let this Khalafat, this Jamaat rise and spread throughout the entire world. Inshallah. Amin. Allahumma. Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. मेरी तरफ आओ इसे Yeah,